Yes, it came from outer space to fill the world with terror, to bring you unforgettable suspense. It's indestructible. It's indescribable. Nothing can stop it. Shock Tales with Johnny Thunder. Just back from Pony Fetish Festival, it's our Mayor Stir of Scaramonies, Johnny Thunder. You know, all these flavors and you choose to be salty, you'll never change. You will never change, genius. What's going on? Chris Planters Baker. Like Planters <laughs> Peanuts, just salty. Salty, salty bitch. Uh, you know, I've just been, you know, I've been uh, hanging out, studying uh, some quantum physics. Uh, oh. Brushing up on some thermodynamics and whatnot, you know. Uh, uh, okay. I, I, I just want to be ready and, uh, in case this, uh, this hot cast thing doesn't work out. You know, I just want to have, uh, have a backup. A backup plan? Yeah, backup, a plan B. Nice, nice. Yeah. All right, so should we just pretend like we, like we haven't spoken in nine months? We'll yeah. Just pre- yeah, pretty okay. much. You know, ha- Halloween was great. Trans world was great. Everything, everything's great. <laughs> Everything is awesome. Yeah. Everything is sweet when you're with Johnny. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. But it was, you know, it was. It, yeah, I don't know. It was from that stupid leg. <laughs> the leg. The Lego movie. Okay. Was, okay. Anyway, so should we just get right to this and just yes. cut out all this yes, nonsense? Yes. A- absolutely. Sponsors. I think this is definitely, definitely a time not for foolishness. Yeah. Right? No. Absolutely. The time, or just foolish. Time is ticking. Tick, and tick, there's tick, no tick. time for it, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Welcome back to The Last Bar on the Left. My name is Johnny Thunder. I'm serving up Shock Tales. This month on my end of the bar, uh, it's brought to you by Bell's Two-Hearted Ale. And Sparkles, I'm afraid to ask, but let us know what's going on on your end. Um, actually, I, I think it's a real sponsor this month. I'm not too, oh. sh- I am not too sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, sponsoring uh, Shock Tales this month. We've got uh, Patreon. Well, I shouldn't say this month. This episode, yes, uh, is Patreon. <laughs> right. I know, right? Who, who knows when we'll be back? Exactly. Patreon. Uh, head over to patreon.com. Search a wide variety of crowdfunding campaigns like Top Notch Podcast, for instance. You know, uh, there's you think one, of any? Yeah, there's actually one in particular uh, you might want to what? check. You might want to check out. You, you might not, but you might want to check out. Um, it's this thing called Hauntcast. Um, oh, really? I'm not sure if you ever came across it. No. Uh, yeah, it's a show about oh. like Halloween and haunting, or you know, some such something like that. Anyway, look, there are. Uh, oh, is that the one? The the the, uh, the main dude's like a complete jerk. I think though, is is that that one? Yeah, the one with the guy who has a, that annoying laugh. You know, really like hideous, annoying laugh. That that's... no, no, I think it's the one where the guy completely changes his mind every half hour and starts the show and cancels the show and starts the show and cancels the show. Yeah, it has yeah. a really bad uh, New England accent. <laughs> Oh, so you've heard? Oh, so you've heard it? Okay. Oh, anyway. telephone, Toby. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, there's several uh, membership tiers to support that show and uh, to get it back to return on a bi-monthly or possibly monthly format. So, you know, just something to look at. You know, rock on, dude. Sweet. All right. So, like we said, there's no time for foolishness. Let's get, let's get right to the glorious segment. Uh, let's get to some upcoming movies. So we'll talk about what's coming out for the rest of your 2018. Coming July 4th is The First Purge. Cleverly enough, this deals with The First Purge. It's a preview. Uh, it's a, uh, what do you call it? prequel to the uh, the Purge series. So if you're into the Purge films, go check out how it all started. I also just read, I think it's September 4th, coming to USA Network. They're doing a Purge TV show. So again, I know this thing has its fans. And if you're into that, check out the movie and then go check out the TV show on, in September. Coming October, I'm sorry. Coming August 24th is Slender Man. Now we all know the creepy pasta and the you know the different stories about Slender Man and unfortunately some of the real life incidents that have revolved around this fictional character. Well, now there's a movie about the character. If you're into that, go check it out at the end of August. Coming a week later is a movie called The Little Stranger. Now I saw this preview before. We saw Hereditary, and it's a supernatural gothic drama based on the novel of the same name. It's a period piece. I don't know if it's about ghosts or it's just about a creepy family. I really don't know anything about it besides the trailer that I saw. So if you're into gothic or supernatural or period pieces, you might want to check that one out. Then you, September's- you know what? You really should be a pitch man. 
I should? Yeah, you really should. Billy, well, you know what? Well, I'm on the next Honcast uh, Patreon <laughs> commercial, right? You could be. All right. You got to sell me on it. September 7th is The Nun. Now, I think everybody loved Conjuring, right? Conjuring 2. And remember in Conjuring 2, the scary nun character? Well, this is the story about how this whole scary nun character came about. So if you want to go check out how the nun came about, put your butt in the seat and go check that one out. Coming October 19th, I think a movie that everybody's talking about and I think everybody's excited about, probably except me, but that's cool. Uh, it's a little film called Halloween. <laughs> it's <laughs> Halloween with Jamie Lee Curtis. Have you, have you heard about that one before, Chris? I, I think I've come across it somewhere. You've come across <laughs> a little bit? So what they're doing is is they're doing another version of Halloween. I guess they're trying to wash away the bad taste in most people's mouths of the Rob Zombie remakes. And uh, they're basically ignoring the continuity of the original Halloween franchise. So this apparently will take place after the original Halloween, ignoring Halloween 2, ignoring Halloween 4, 5, and ignoring Halloween H2O. And basically telling the story of Laurie Strode, and I believe it's her granddaughter, uh, all these years later on the night that Michael comes back for Laurie. Now, you know, my problem is, is I think everybody knows if you listen to the show, Halloween, you know, Carpenter's film is one of my absolute favorite films. I think it's just a, a perfect horror film, a perfect suspense film. And, you know, in H2O, we already had the let's revisit Laurie's story where she is all these years later. She has the son. She's running the private academy. Now, is it a great film? No. But was it sort of a satisfactory wrap up to Laurie's story? Yeah, I thought so. You know, it was fine. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know really why anybody needs to revisit this. You know, I don't know why uh, Jamie Lee Curtis really wants to go back and do it again. And I don't mean to be crass, but, you know, besides a paycheck, I'm not really sure what's here. You know, again, it's going to be, oh, the script is so wonderful. I had to revisit this character. And it was so great to, you know, ignore the other films and come back to my character and explore where she is now and how she's been preparing for Michael's return. But, you know, I mean, of course, I'm going to go see it, but I'm not actually as overboard as everybody else is that I think. Uh, I've just seen a lot of people posting that they're really, really into it. I'm sort of indifferent. I'm hoping that when uh, the film comes out, my expectations are surpassed. But right now, I'm just sort of, eh, you know, it, it seems like it's their effort to reboot after the Rob Zombie flicks and move forward as a franchise. So, you know, I, like I said, I'm I'm not necessarily thrilled. I mean, is this something you're into or you really don't care either way? Uh, you know, I, <clears throat> you know, say I do love the original. Um, the rest, I just not really that into like the continuation of the Michael Myers. I just don't think there's really anything there that I'm in, I'm looking for. It seems but like get, pretty much the, the same point, thing. Like, but if yeah. you've already sort of done this, you know, as an, I guess as an actress, you know, as uh, myself, as an actress, uh, I'm, <laughs> you know, you know, you're an actor and a, I just don't know. A Facebook what, fan favorite. Nonetheless. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> if only I could regain my glory days. Um, <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's sort of like you've done it and I don't know why you need to redo it. I just so, don't know what the challenge yeah. is there. That, Some, that's all. Sometimes you just got to get paid. Yeah. And I yeah. guess those Activia commercials, you know, with your <laughs> explosive diarrhea, uh, yogurt aren't paying the bills i guess i don't know and i love jamie lee curtis so i'm not bashing her but you know whatever i guess i'm jealous because nobody's giving me you know money to be in a movie but whatever now speaking of remakes keep, that reaching, I don't think are... keep, keep reaching for the stars sparkles exactly well i mean my god i'm <laughs> i'm an admin in the haunt cast group what more could i ask for um you know like I said, we're talking about needless remakes. And again, this goes back to our first episode, dude, like our very first episode. Remember, we talked about all the rash of remakes coming out of Hollywood. And I'm always like, look, if you don't like the remakes, you don't have to watch them. You've still got your original films. Don't sweat them. Move on with your day. But like coming November 2nd is Suspiria. It's a remake of the Dario Argento classic. And I'm sort of, again, what? You know, it, it just doesn't need to be remade. But here it is. And again, I'll probably go check it out because I do love the original. But I again, it's it's another film that I suppose for a new generation, if you want to try to reach a new group of horror fans and you want to try to make money off of a proven product, you know, that's that's where Hollywood is right now. So if you're into that, go check it out November 2nd. And then coming uh, November 29th is The House That Jack Built with Matt Dillon and Uma Thurman. 
about a serial killer, and it takes place over a span of 12 years over his, quote-unquote, killing career. So that's all that I have for the rest of the year that's coming out. Why don't we move on to uh, some reviews? There's a couple movies that have been out for a couple months, but I want to recommend. The first one is The 420 Massacre. How far is it? Three, four miles? I'm telling you, though, this place is super creepy. What are you girls doing out here? On our way up to Higgins Creek. Yeah, we're going to camp there for the weekend. Well, five of you are out here by your lonesome, huh? Listen. We have an issue up here with gorilla growers. Are you serious? It's 420. It is our collective duty to blaze up on this day. Obviously, 420, you know, we, one of our favorite days. Uh, the story revolves around a group of five women who go camping in the woods to celebrate a friend's birthday over, of course, the marijuana holiday weekend. But when they cross the turf of an illegal marijuana grow operation, they must struggle to survive the living nightmare. Now, at first, you know, you look at it, and you go, oh, good Lord, it sounds completely low budget, which it is. Um, but it's written and directed by Dylan Reynolds. And one of the actors who plays the park ranger is Jim Storm. Now, fans of Dark Shadows will know him. Um, and he was also, I think, on Chris, one of your other favorite shows, The Bold and the Beautiful. So he also was on that show. And uh, I really dug this. You know, it was pretty well acted all around, surprisingly. A lot of these films aren't that well developed, but a few of the characters actually felt very authentic. The main actress is very, very good. She really is convincing. And the, like I said, this group goes out, they cross over into this illegal grow operation, and there's this big dude in a ghillie suit that pretty much systematically kills other campers and then basically hunts down all the girls in 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 their group. So it's a straight up slasher. It's not played for jokes. It's not played for comedy, which I dug. And it was pretty well grounded, pretty well acted, and pretty well directed. So if you see that anywhere, 420 Massacre, you could do a lot worse. Uh, I, I pretty much dug it. Another flick that I really dug is called Terrifier. What if that guy did this to your car? What guy? The clown? Do you really think someone slashed my tires? Well, he knows this is your car. He saw us getting into it earlier. Cut it out. My friend wants your number. Kill you. Look, that guy was harmless. He was just some douchebag in a costume acting like a retard because it's Halloween. I know there was some buzz about this, and I really, really dug this film. A maniacal clown named Art terrorizes three women on Halloween night and everyone else who stands in his way. This thing was, again, a straight-up homage to 80s slasher films. It was really, really scary in parts. Art the Clown is freaking creepy. Have you seen that dude in any of the promo materials or any of the previews or anything? No, I didn't. And by the way, next time, uh, these these were all the uh, Vimeo uh, screeners that they're sending you? Is that is that these, uh, all these this logins? This one was or? not. Terrifier was not. Terrifier I caught on demand, so I, I actually paid for that one. Uh, okay. But this thing was awesome. The guy is super creepy, super scary. It's very bloody, very visceral. There are some great practical effects. There are some pretty horrifying scenes where it is just bloody, gory, crazy stuff. And um, there's there's a kind of a little bit of a twist at the end that um, I won't spoil. That's why I'm trying to do all of these with no spoilers this time around. But it's a really, really good flick. And there's a couple of things where people say, well, at the end, does does the uh, serial killer break the quote unquote serial killer code? And once you see the film, you'll know what they're talking about. But I was actually pretty shocked and pleased by the twist in the movie. So if you haven't seen Terrifier and you're into slasher flicks, go check it out because Art the Clown is friggin scary. All right, let's move on. Yeah, Jurassic Dead was another uh, screener that I got it. Basically is about, well, pretty much you can figure it out. It's about a zombie dinosaur. Um, <laughs> and yeah, so there's there's, a, there's a, di- a zombie dinosaur. And there's this whole thing where um, there's this unit of mercenaries that have to team up with a group of these geeky tech students after an EMP attack in the United States. So they find this mad scientist who's created this formula, who's created this... T-Rex, dinosaur, zombie, and everyone that he attacks turns into 
a zombie themselves. So you've got this group of people that are fighting this crazy zombie dinosaur and the other people turn into zombies. It, uh, <laughs> it sounds and it pretty much was nothing really elevated above the year of standard sort of sci-fi channel horror film, you know, on a Sunday afternoon or a Saturday afternoon. The effects were pretty much all CGI, which were fine, you know. But, you know, the idea of a zombie T-Rex was kind of interesting. <laughs> um, the acting is bad. You know, there's nothing there. Like I said, if, if, if you watch a sci-fi movie, you know what you're getting. But the idea of, of a zombie dinosaur, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm down for that. It, it was fine. I mean, there was a worse way to spend two hours. It was overly long. You know, it was like, um, you know, washing dishes and taking the dog out in between. <laughs> um, but it, it was fine. You know, I, I don't like to slam any Thing, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But it was, so, you know, so it didn't make you angry. You didn't. Uh, you know, uh, it yeah, made it, me angry. It made me angry. I'm just in a good mood tonight. <laughs> well, that's a first. Yeah, I know, right? Wow. Well, I mean, if we go back to bi monthly or monthly, I'll be much crankier. Believe me. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you will. <laughs> <laughs> this will this will pass. It will. All, well, I've all, known you for a all, long time. I know it, this will pass. It, it's all downhill from here. <laughs> all right. So another flick that I think you caught and I caught was called Darkness Reigns, right? Yes. Did you watch that? Yes. All right. Okay. We are about to arrive on set for the first time. Yeah, I've got the doctor. <laughs> okay. Perfect. This Casper's here over there talking to uh, Jacob. So maybe you can get a couple of shots. This is dope. Make sure to get good shots of all this stuff. It's a million dollar look for absolutely nothing. And here's the cherry. They say it's haunted. But what better place to film a ghost movie than in a haunted hotel, right? Let me know if you need anything. And action! I'll be back. I promise. And cut, we got it. Yeah, we're good. Great. Well, thank you, Mr. Van Dean. I'll take that. Yeah, this place is right really creepy. I need to sit back and take a drink, all right? All right, you know, chug, 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 <laughs> chug, chug. All right, the only thing I will say is uh, it was no leprechaun in the hood. Oh, my God. It was no piranha three double D. <laughs> it was no frogs, you know? I mean, you know, that's all I'm going to say about it. All right, so... <laughs> Great. Okay. Okay. Awesome. That was that was completely useless. I'm, I'm glad I turned it over. So, uh, it's all about a uh, film crew that's making a movie in this allegedly haunted location, and it turns out that there's really a demon. There's really a possession, and you kind of see what's going on. There's a lot of found footage aspect to it. Um, it's sort of this behind the scenes crew that's taking a B roll for an extra segment on the DVD release of the film that's being filmed. And you have them going around doing these first person interviews again, sort of the found footage idea with Casper Van Dien, uh, which, uh, you know, Starship Troopers and uh, Sleepy Hollow. Um, I actually had an interview opportunity to, to, to interview him for the, about this movie, but it, it had already passed by the time we started doing this movie, uh, this yeah. episode, because I would love to interview the cat about actually Sleepy Hollow. But anyway, uh, yeah, so um, it was fine. You know, again, I actually thought Casper Van Dien was the most interesting one in the film and the way that they sort of played with how Hollywood actors have to sit through those press junkets and how they have to make nice with the camera and, and everything else. But overall, you know, I, it was fine. You know, I think again, you could do much worse, but I, you know, I don't know if I could necessarily recommend it if it's on, you know, maybe you watch it, but I don't know if I'd go out and rent it or anything like that. It, it like it, it started off and it, it was okay. Like it was like, all right, well, let's see. Yeah, the other acting was, you know, a little bad, you know, but it wasn't horrible at first. And, once it got to this, the, uh, like I say, no spoilers this episode. Once it got to that one scene, like where all hell like, broke loose, hell broke loose. That's where the bad acting really shined. <laughs> that's when things yeah, got it's actually really funny. bad. To, up, you know, I was most interested in the movie up to that point. Yeah, up to sort of like where it starts to go, like, oh, this is kind of batshit crazy. Um, but yeah. otherwise, yeah, you know, so like I said, it was fine. So, well, you know what? Let's leave that behind. Let's. Mm -hmm. Let's cleanse our palates. Cheers. All right, look, here. Take a take look, a drink. Oh, Hold oh. on. A little uh, a little horror sorbet here. Maybe you know. There you go. All right. Let's get right to 
the main course, of course, the film that's been out, that's gotten a lot of buzz, got a lot of buzz on the uh, uh, film festival circuit called Hereditary. Come on, Peter. Let's just sue it. It's heartening to see so many strange new faces here today. I know my mom would be very touched and probably a little suspicious. My mother was a very secretive and private woman. It's Grandma. You know you were her favorite, right? Even when you were a little baby, she wouldn't let me feed you because she needed to feed you. She was a very difficult woman, which maybe explains me. I recognize you from your mother. What? Sometimes I swear I can feel them in the room. She isn't gone. She had private rituals, private friends. Who's going to take care of me? You don't think I'm going to take care of you? But when you die... And she wasn't all together there. <laughs> At the end. any more stress on my family so written and directed by ari astor starring tony collette gabriel byrne and alex wolf rated r for horror violence disturbing images language drug use and brief graphic nudity our favorite uh when the matriarch of the graham family passes away her daughter's family begins to unravel cryptic and increasingly terrifying secrets about their ancestry so as I said, in the past, we've completely spoiled movies and we've given away plot details and people have screamed about it. So I want to avoid that this this episode. Maybe we'll go back to that next time. OK, that'll be a <laughs> that'll be an incentive to bring the show back by monthly or monthly. Um, but I got to say, going into this, I'd heard great buzz. And, you know, that's bitten us in the ass in the past where, you know, you, you're going into a film where it's gotten great buzz or it's gotten great critical review. And you go into it and you go, eh, OK, you know, whatever. Uh, this one to me really really was well worth the visit to the theater it plays a little over two hours which i think towards the end felt a little bit long to me but what you know to, to me this film really again we always use that slow burn um expression i haven't experienced a slower burn since my bowl got clogged with resin and i ran out of pipe cleaners <laughs> And, but, kid, and, and kids, by the way, I am no means out there. Am I? Am I endorsing the use of illegal, you know, narcotics or whatnot? Okay, this is perfect uh, for trying to bring the show back. You know, this <laughs> perfect, perfect, perfect. I like. I'm trying not to curse. I'm trying not to make any sort of sexual references. I'm trying not to be demeaning to any particular groups. I'm trying to be as PC as nice as possible. And of course, now we just have explicit drug use references. <laughs> anyway, all right. Here's uh, my. Here's my. Here's my vote on this and chris baker is irrelevant so if he doesn't like it you know he's wrong this is a perfect example of a film that builds a sense of dread and you are trapped in this sort of living nightmare where you're experiencing this this family uh, unraveling and even if you didn't introduce the sort of supernatural elements that are introduced in the film that make it horrific and make it more you know overtly terrifying you witness the breakdown of a family you witness the breakdown mentally of pretty much everyone involved in the film that's scary enough add in then the mystery of what's really going on what's happening here i i really would say that again i went into it knowing nothing about it besides it's about a family and you know i knew nothing else about it if you go into it i i think the more astute Viewer, I think the, the 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 true horror fan is going to pick up some signals early. I I did because 
originally I kind of had an idea. I was like, oh, this might be this kind of a film. Then I go, hmm. I'm getting a sense that it maybe goes in a different direction, but then it pulls me back in the original direction that you think it might be more about spiritualism or it might be more of a ghost film. And then you're like, no, it goes back into where originally I thought, you know, I thought this film was going. I loved it. Um, I, I, I really loved the performances. Again, Tony Collette, to me, she is amazing. She is a stunning, stunning actress. You probably know her from Krampus. Um, you know her from a couple other uh, genre films. Really a, a, a tremendous, tremendous effort by her. And also Alex Wolf, who plays the son, I was really impressed with. At the very beginning, I wasn't sure of him. But as the performance went on, I was really blown away by him as well. You know, there are a couple scenes, and again, I don't want to give away spoilers, but <clears throat> the way it's shot, you know, you have jump shots. You have this, this, this. it pretty much p- takes place all in this home surrounded by these tall white trees. And it, it, it almost represents a prison where these people are trapped in, in this town and in this home. And, you know, they're, they're trapped in, in, in their minds. The, uh, the uh, Tony Collette, the mother, is trapped in her art. And uh, again, there's a lot more I could say, but I don't necessarily want to give it all away. Um, but a lot of the symbolism of the film, of the mother's art, I think definitely plays into the story, plays into her character. Um, there are a couple scenes where you've got this unexpected way that they uh, reveal to the other characters that like a horrific death in the family. And it's very quiet and it's very off screen. Then all of a sudden you're juxtaposed with this really shockingly, horrifyingly graphic image. And that was just even more upsetting. Um, there's also a couple confrontations. I, I, the, uh, there's a dinner scene between the mother and the son, which I just was kind of blown away at the acting um, expressed in that. So understand as much as this is a horror film, horror in the sense of if you want to get into ghosts or demons or devils or conspiracy, whatever you want to talk about, it's also very tragic and very sad in terms of the breakdown of a family. And once you start to put the pieces together as Tony Collette does as the mother and finally realizes what's been going on her entire life and our experience as a viewer, this entire film, I, I, I really, really was blown away, and uh, I walked out of there like, holy crap, this was one of the better films that I've seen. Now, I will say, critics love it, audiences seem to be split down the middle, so much like I love The Witch, you know, say, I think a lot of people love this movie, but a lot of people also hate it, so... If you're going into this and you want jump scares and you want gore and you want that kind of nonsense, you ain't going to get it. If you want a very sophisticated um, sort of intellectual horror, a mystery about it, much in line with, say, Rosemary's Baby or other sort of culty conspiracy films, you'll get that here. So I definitely recommend this. Now, you'll probably – I don't know what you're going to say, but if you don't like it, you're wrong, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can say I p- pretty much loved about 90 to 95% of the movie, okay. but the, the last five or ten minutes, I thought it just – I thought that the way he executed that final scene um, – uh, oh, I, I, I think the last 15 uh, minutes should I, be truncated. Uh, yeah, I... Uh, it just went uh, on too long. Yeah. Not, the only thing I will say is when one character shows up out of nowhere and sort of insinu- insinuates herself into the film, and I think you know who I'm talking about, um, I go, okay, so it kind of cemented my original idea of what the film was about. Now, it doesn't take away from the film in any way. It doesn't ruin it. But, again, watching these actors you know, work with this material. I was really super impressed. So uh, again, I don't want to say, Oh, this is a new classic, but this will flick through. Like I'm going to go buy and I'm going to watch again because it, I probably missed a lot the first time around. And I was really, really impressed with how, how awesome this was. All right. All right, everybody. Well, Hey, as always, thank you for listening. Chris, as always, it was nice talking to you, I suppose. All right, everybody. Thank you. And, uh, stay scary. I'm going now. Please like and follow the podcast. Stalk us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Links in the description. 
and help us by sharing HauntCast with all your haunted Halloween brethren. Until next time, stay scary. Oh, <laughs> my